Hi everybody, welcome back to the video. So last week we saw chapter 3 of the Dreamcast games that could have been. And that was the episode where we took a look at uh, multi-cartridge Naomi games as well as the Sega Hikaru system which was the bridge between Naomi and Naomi 2. In episode 1 we saw cartridge based Naomi games as well as episode 2 showing disc based Naomi arcade games. So Heading into episode 4, we're going to take a look at Naomi 2. Now, I know those of you that are up on Sega arcade architecture are probably thinking to yourselves, Kermit, why are you taking a look at Naomi 2? Come on now. At least Naomi is a, you know, a close sibling to the Dreamcast. But the reality of it is that I know that if these games were to come out of the Dreamcast, there would be some compromise to what we have seen in the arcades. But you know what? I'm willing to accept that because looking back as far as home consoles, arcade ports generally were not nearly as good as the arcade experience. You know, Dreamcast, we oftentimes saw games that were, you know, going above and beyond that in comparison to Naomi. And so just because additional features that were brought home with the console releases. So seeing a game that even had some mild compromises perhaps for the Dreamcast, even though it's a quality game, would have been welcome. So Let's take a look and see a few Naomi 2 arcade games. This is taking a look at both cartridge and disc based games that came out on the architecture and see what could potentially come out on the Dreamcast. Let's watch. All right, the first video we're going to take a look at is Sega Kart Racing, Club Kart Racing European Session. Now, there were actually two Club Kart versions. So, the original one, which Sega released, was in 2001, and the follow up which was set in Europe versus being in Japan, came out in 2002 as Club Kart European Sessions. So as you can probably guess, this is a go-kart style racer, arcade racer. We know that Sega has a great pedigree with regards to making great quality arcade racers. And it's unfortunate because we take a look at the time when this game came out, 2001, 2002. In those Naomi 2, it wouldn't have been far-fetched them to make a, a simplified version for the Dreamcast. Naomi 2 and Dreamcast were closely related, made not as closely related as Naomi 1 and Dreamcast, but this would have been a great game to play, certainly because of the fact that you, know, you could have multiple players playing online play. Sega was definitely at the forefront with regards to online console gaming, so I think this would have been a great game to play. And certainly as far as, you know, different from what's available out in the industry when we are used to things like Mario Kart. So definitely as far as this looks like a really fun, fast, high polished racer that I think would have been a perfect addition to the Dreamcast library. If only it would have come out. Alright, next up is yet another arcade game made by Sega. So unlike the Naomi 1, Naomi 2 that we saw before and as well as the the Hikaru arcade hardware by Sega seem to be only Sega driven. And this is yet another arcade game by Sega, the venerable AM2 studio. And they brought to light on the Naomi 2 architecture Beach Spikers. And definitely, as far as you know, for this type of game, certainly it's a sports game, we didn't have anything like that on the Dreamcast. Certainly, as far as I don't think anyone thought about how much fun. A volleyball game could be probably until uh, this game as well as uh, their live extreme beach volleyball graced home consoles with beat spikers coming out on the GameCube and their live on the Xbox. So sadly beat spikers this came out in 2001 in the arcades so not too far fetched that we could have seen this on the Dreamcast as a, as a simplified port. Certainly as far as home consoles we're used to having uh, ports that were not necessarily as arcade perfect as the arcade counterpart but since Dreamcast and Naomi and Naomi 2 were closely related we could have seen this happen all right as far as our next game coming up this is a game that I think would have been interesting to see how difficult it would have been to come to Dreamcast and this is not necessarily based upon the the technical aspects of it this is yet another great game by Sega you know from the Sega Rosso uh, studio which was known for making racers and this is initial d so definitely a fun racing game arcade racer inspired by the anime initial d and so that's why i said 
you know, I wonder how difficult it would have been for this to come out. Just because the fact is that this is, you know, specifically licensed property. So I'm not sure necessarily who had the initial D anime property uh, for publishing, but oftentimes, you know, these Japanese uh, licensed properties, so for instance, Sega licensed the initial D property to make video games. Well, someone else probably had the manga license so they could release initial D manga, and someone else probably had the anime license. So it'd probably be making partnerships and agreements to say, hey, we'd like to bring this out. Is there going to be any kind of issue with this happening? And I think definitely it would have been a great to see this just because, you know, the initial D franchise was uh, pretty robust when it comes to the arcade racers on Naomi 2. So, you know, I have, you know, various uh, footage showing from the different versions of the game, but there's initial D arcade stage, there's initial D arcade stage 2 so the first one came out in 2002 stage 2 came out in 2003 and there was initial d version 3 which came out in 2004 so each one successfully complementing the, the prior version with additional content following along the lines of the anime I'm, I'm guessing so it's definitely something to where you know would it have been lost on many individuals in the states certainly that is possible just because it's not necessarily as popular as, say, Dragon Ball Z, Bleach, Naruto, and such. But still, it's a pretty well-respected franchise. And not just to mention the fact that this is Sega behind the wheel making a great arcade racer. So definitely, as far as Sega definitely knows how to make arcade racers. They have a long line, great pedigree dating back to... You know, virtual racing. We saw the you know Model Two hardware with regards to things like Sega Rally, Daytona USA. So definitely, as far as racers, it's definitely their cup of tea. So I think it would have been neat to have seen this, just because you know there was something similar to this on the Dreamcast. We had the Tokyo Extreme Racer One and Two come. All right, next up is another Sega game. This is Virtua Striker Three. So on the Dreamcast, we were graced with Virtua Striker Two and a host of other soccer games. I can't speak to as far as which soccer game was better, but definitely compared, comparing Virtua Striker 3 to what came out on the Dreamcast, definitely this looks a, far more visually appealing. Now granted though, this is Naomi 2 hardware, you know, it's definitely going to be more powerful than the Dreamcast, but I think definitely we could have seen, you know, I think a more robust presentation as far as for the Dreamcast for a good soccer game. So. You know, certainly as far as I'm interested for soccer fans or football or football fans for the Dreamcast, what was your favorite soccer game, football game? And what do you think about Virtua Striker 3 as a potential game for the Dreamcast? I think it would have been a great addition just because, hey, we didn't have FIFA and we didn't have uh, Pro Evolution Soccer. All right, shifting gears both literally and figuratively, we went from a arcade racer where you're riding souped up Japanese imports to big rigs, 18 wheelers. So on the Dreamcast, we were graced with Crazy Taxi 1, Crazy Taxi 2, 18 wheeler American Pro Trucker. So this is essentially the follow-up to 18-wheeler. That is King of Route 66. So this is essentially building upon what was already placed for the foundation on the Dreamcast. But unfortunately, we never had it come to light. You know, I'm sure there's various reasons and pushes just because Sega was going third party. But timing-wise, King of Route 66 raised the arcades back in... 2002 so this is not too far-fetched that we could have seen this game come out on the dreamcast granted sure naomi 2 it's a little more powerful but hey they could have made it happen we've seen far more advanced arcade games find their ways in very serviceable ports on home consoles so certainly as far as we could have enjoyed all the great zany action that this game brought Eventually to home consoles because this did get a home console port, but sadly not on the Dreamcast Which I think is a true travesty just because of the fact that It may have come on other consoles, but really the Dreamcast would have been the closest thing as far as relation to Naomi 2 so I'd be curious to see what everyone thinks about The likelihood how this will turned out on the Dreamcast I think it would have been a great addition. It would definitely welcome addition to my library to 
use my racing wheels. So I think that's too bad we didn't get it. All right, we're getting close to the end, and this is yet another Sega masterpiece by AM2. And you've been seeing several AM2 logos, but this is the one that most of you are probably waiting for. And that one has to be Virtual Fighter 4. If there's one game I think that could really push the hardware from a arcade standpoint, as well as serve as a system seller, it would have been this game. And it's really unfortunate that Sega did not pull the trigger to bring this game to Dreamcast. I think it's a really a travesty because First of all, we had Virtual Fighter 3 TV, and it was a good game. I don't think it was necessarily as good of an arcade experience for home consoles as I enjoyed with playing Virtual Fighter 2 on the Sega Saturn. I think it was good, but I think it faltered. I mean, definitely as far as purists out there say that Genki didn't really do it justice as Sega would have done for the, for the arcade port. So Genki's known for Tokyo Extreme Racer, which is a great you know game in and of its own, but definitely as far as we think of, you know, great properties from an arcade standpoint for Sega, you can't not think about Virtua Fighter, and certainly Virtua Fighter 4 would have been a great addition because it came out in 2001. I mean, definitely as far as, you know, if you were importing Shenmue 2, there was a pack in this that said Virtua Fighter 4, so a lot of people were thinking that, hey, is there a Dreamcast demo of this game, Virtua Fighter 4? And sadly, that was not the case. And I think really, it is a great travesty just because Virtual Fighter 4 was definitely a far much better return uh, of, of the series. I think really, really put on the forefront. I think on multiple aspects, not just because it was such a great fighting game. And I think also because of the fact that Sega is now going multi-platform. They Sega decided to plant the game on the PlayStation 2 hardware and it sold fantastic. You know, we saw in 2001 Virtua Fighter 4 come out in the arcades, followed by Virtua Fighter Evolution in 2002, and finally finalized with Final Tune in 2004. So all these certainly could have come out on the Dreamcast. I think definitely from a from a standpoint, yeah, I think really Sega lost the opportunity that even though many of their games and their fans may have gravitated towards the PlayStation 2, there were still several that were going to other consoles. You know, Sega at the time was dividing up all their franchises between different platforms. We saw, you know, Sonic Adventure going to the GameCube. We ended up seeing Panzer Dragoon, Gun Valkyrie on the Xbox. And on the PlayStation 2, we saw Virtua Fighter 4. We saw Shinobi make an appearance. Uh, we saw a host of other games. And it's just really unfortunate that Sega didn't decide to release this game as a port on the Dreamcast, as well as going multi platform. You know, I think they could have served as being out of the hardware business and just focusing on software. And they already had an install base of Dreamcast systems out there. So I think definitely, you know, Virtua Fighter 4 would have had a perfect home on the Dreamcast. Certainly with the fact that with their uh, online infrastructure, this could have been a great game to try to play. Now, granted, though, I know it probably wouldn't have been as good just because, you know, not many people have had the broadband adapter. Uh, Dial-up, you know, certainly it's not necessarily as as quick and accurate. So I know for our arcade fighting game purists out there, they would have said, hey, you want to have a low ping and you'll make the most of things. But I think Sega did a great job with regards to their online architecture back you know, 20 years ago. So I think people would have taken the chance to play the Virtual Fighter 4 online against others. You know, I think it would have been an interesting feat. And I think definitely would have, you know, paved the way for more things to come so you know, it wasn't too far later that we were seeing on the xbox where you could have you purchase downloadable content so you know sega would have had a little bit more time but they'll put a little more attention to the dreamcast instead of just abandoning it completely and going to the other three systems and just still continue to provide some support with multi-platform releases with the dreamcast and other systems i think it'd been a great opportunity to really do great things for dreamcast all right, the grand finale, and that's Wild Riders. What can I say about Wild Riders? I, first, before making this video, there wasn't much I really knew about this. And when I discovered this game, I thought to myself, I need to learn more about this. And taking a look at the gameplay, it reminds me a three-way combination of Jet Set Radio, Road Rash from the good old Sega Genesis days, and then also Crazy Taxi. So definitely it has that kind of wild you know look from behind the uh the driver like you've seen crazy taxi but it definitely has that cell shading you know, that we came to enjoy in jet set radio 
and then definitely as far as just the motorcycle mayhem, I think of Road Rash as like my reflex. And I think this would have been such a fun game to play. It's just really too bad that we didn't see this on Dreamcast just because timing wise, this game came out in 2001. It definitely could have been, you know, one of the many swan songs that Sega released in the arcades that could have had in a port. It's just really too bad because I'm not aware of this game coming out even on any other console. Uh, if you are aware of this game coming out on another console, please comment. I would love to know just because I gotta go find this game. So I'm sure there's probably emulators out there to where you play this game and such, but you know, I'm one who likes to play it on on home consoles, on hardware, so definitely as far as if you're aware of this, please comment. But definitely this looks like so much fun. I mean, gosh, this is just great fast action, great visuals, just lush, vivid colors. It's just simply looks like a great stylized game. And it's really too bad that we didn't get to see this. Alright, so definitely taking a look at that list, I thought it was pretty spectacular. Not as big as some of the other videos with regards to the number of titles, but I think from a quality standpoint, there were some great games that were there. Now, as far as, you know, of all those games, I think definitely Virtua Fighter 4 would have been the most impressive. We will have seen that on the Dreamcast. I remember there, were a lot, there was a lot of talk about it potentially coming to Dreamcast. It was teased about with Shenmue 2 in Japan, and it's really unfortunate that we didn't get to see it. So... You know, looking at the horizons, I've got a couple more of these videos left to take a look at Dreamcast games that could have been. So there's about two more episodes remaining. So I hope to have the next two out over the next uh, week and a half or so. So definitely, if you enjoy what you're watching, please go ahead and subscribe. Click on the bell for notifications. Just be aware as far as the next video is coming out. And certainly as far as I'm always welcome to comments. Certainly I'm learning about this as I go along. And certainly always welcome to... Hearing about other fans as far as what Sega games you enjoyed. So definitely thanks for stopping by and hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Bye.